GPUs are being sold by the buttload, but to whom? The updated PS5 sucks? And there might be a half a million graphics cards about to hit the market. You wanna talk about that? Well, we can because today's episode of Hot News is here. Let's jump right on into the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And I just wanna say a big thanks to everybody who checked out the special weekend episode of Hot News that we put out, which was the week in news, just kind of reviewing and recapping everything that happened. I got all of your feedback. I need to talk a little slower, probably need to add some timestamps and you guys want background music. Gotcha. We can probably do all of that. I appreciate the support on that. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you can check it out right up there. I said at the time that I was going to release a second special edition of Weekend Hot News on Sunday, but my weekend got away from me. However, I have figured out a way that I can make it work this coming weekend so that we can get both weekend special editions out to you. So we'll see how all of that goes. And with all of that housekeeping out of the way, let's go ahead and let's take a sip of coffee because we're eating our breakfast whether first, second, or third, fourth breakfast, and talk about how GPU shipments have gone up in Q2 and year over year. GPUs are being sold like by an incredible amount, okay? The annual growth rate of GPUs is 3.5%, and from Q1 to Q2, GPU shipments went up 3.4%, even though historically in Q2, everything goes down. So where are these GPUs being sold to? Well, according to John Petty Research, they don't know. They're not breaking it down based on all of that from what we can see. And it costs thousands of dollars to access the full report from this company that does all of this market research there. However, there's a few key interesting things to note that the attach rate of GPUs has been down 0.1% from the previous quarter, and it's down to 117%, which I just have to ask. So are they, they're, they're definitely included integrated GPUs there, right? Like you get, you get a laptop that has an integrated GPU and a dedicated GPU, because that's the only way you have over 100% attach rate from the way I'm, I'm braining that one. But CPU market is up three and a half percent. GPU market is up three and a half percent. Who are getting all of these GPUs? But also to note, AMD versus Nvidia market share. AMD continuing to drop quarter on quarter versus Nvidia. You can see here from Q2 of last year, Nvidia has increased from 63.5 percent to 68.29 percent and AMD has dropped 17.65 to 16.48 and Intel has also likewise decreased their market share so Nvidia continuing to gain ground which likely indicates that they are producing more than ever so even if you're not seeing GPUs at retail they are being sold but again to whom? I think we know the answer. I think we can assume it's to your parents, okay? They're stocking up for Christmas, making sure that you're gonna have a nice GPU present under the tree, Jimmy. They love you so much. But I just find it very interesting, even though this is probably one of the strongest generations of GPUs that AMD has had in a long time, right? Like the RX 6000 is a heavy hitter, just beating in video when it comes to like raw compute performance. It's great. They're not selling as much. Is this because they can't produce as much because TSMC can't keep up with what Samsung can produce? Or is this a matter of gamers and miners alike just don't want to purchase AMD right now? I think YouTube as a whole has this like deep adoration for AMD and like anytime I say anything negative about AMD, everybody just goes wild in the comments. But I think the market is showing us something different. Like the market doesn't want to buy AMD, whether it's crypto or retail, they're not gaining market share when it comes to sales. And it seems like Nvidia, even though technically besides ray chasing DLSS and all of their RTX broadcast stuff, which obviously does provide value, the things that people tell you on the internet are the reasons you should buy AMD don't matter to people who actually are buying GPUs. Let me know what you think of that assessment down below in the comments. AMD versus Nvidia GPUs being sold more than ever. Have you been able to pick up a GPU in the last three months more so than you thought that you would have actually not last three months. So between April and June, were you looking for a GPU and you were able to snag one or are you still waiting for this world to stop hating? You can't find a good reason. Can't find hope to believe in. Anyways. But I tell you what you should pick up if you can't get a GPU, and even if you can, a chirp wheel, my friends, because they're the sponsor of today's episode of Hot News. This is highly relevant to my life right at this very moment. I just got done doing a little bit of exercise and trying to stay in shape, and my back is barking. Dogs are barking. My back is aching, and just need to do a little stretch on the chirp wheel in order to relieve that. So while I record this ad spot, I'm gonna do just that. Listen, my friends, this is probably one of the easiest ways that you can get back stretch relief, okay? It just feels so good on my back right now because it has that spinal canal groove with its unique four-way stretch that makes it so easy to just hop on this thing. 
supports up to 500 pounds. You can get it three different sizes. Right now, I'm rolling on the medium. I think this is the best. The large one, I do like from time to time. I actually very rarely do use the deep tissue one simply because um, I don't get too many knots in my back. It's not a problem that I actually have. I usually don't need deep tissue work. It's more just like that general limberness that needs to be applied. So this is an FDA registered class one medical device. You can purchase it with your HSA savings. And when you click the link in the video description, you can check them out. No special promo code, but in case you're interested, the chirp wheel is linked in the video description. Big thanks to them for sponsoring today's episode of Hot News. And my back is honestly feeling better. So let's move on into the hot news. Let's get back into the more, into the more. Let's get back into the news. Ah. Apparently it doesn't help my brain, but while tons of GPUs were sold in Q2, it doesn't look like the future is gonna be all that bright. There's new reports coming out from ID Home as well as board partners that are indicating that the RTX 3060 and 3060 Ti might have a slight supply decrease in the month of September, simply because Nvidia isn't gonna be able to produce as many of those GPUs for that. However, it's being reported that many of the RTX 30 series GPUs, not just the 3060 series, are not gonna be sold in as big of quantities in September, simply because COVID shutting down different factories that produce different parts that need to be added into this. And it's just gonna be a kind of struggling continuation, hopefully being resolved by late September, early October in order for GPUs to be sold a little bit more. And it looks like Russia is selling GPUs that didn't exist. The RTX 3080 Ti 20 gigabyte, this could be Photoshop, but one of video cards readers sending in pictures of retail GPUs that are 3080 Ti with 20 gigabytes. This makes sense because the 20 gigabyte version of the RTX 30 Ti was rumored. However, the indication that video cards is getting is that this is probably a misprint, especially because other parts of the print on the box don't actually match up with the EEC filing of the 20 gigabyte version of the 3080 Ti. And so this probably could just be a sticker misprint with the GPU inside still having that 12 gigabytes of VRAM and not the 20 gigabytes. So don't necessarily hold out your hopes on that. And let's not hold out our hopes that the markets are gonna go up and down. It's time for some people's favorite segment, other people's least favorite segments. Good things we have timestamps down below in the thing. Go just skip past crypto stocks. It's a mild, mild time, all right? Bitcoin not really moving in the last 24 hours, down 1.7. 6%, uh, it's kind of same position, slightly down from the $50,000 high that it was earlier in this week, but at $48,500 Ethereum in a very similar situation, down 1.85%. Dogecoin, again, very similar, down 2%. GameStop, meme stocks, also very similar, down 0.13%, not really moving, staying over $200 on GameStop though, 204.95 was closed on Friday, and AMC, again, slight movements up 1.3% to close at 40.84. We'll see where they go this week as we continue with hot news. And we'll continue to buy from Fractal because they handled a recall phenomenally, okay? The Fractal Torrent was a case that they launched within the last couple of weeks, it got rave reviews, and then it came out that the fan hub that they actually use on it might short circuit, which could cause some issues. And you know what they did? They didn't pull an NZXT and say, hey, it, listen, it's not a big deal if things go wrong. And they didn't pull a Gigabyte who said, hey, you did it wrong. You tested it wrong. You know what they did? They said, hey, this is a problem. We're not gonna sell this anymore. We're gonna get replacement kits out to you right away. You wanna submit for your replacement kit? There you go. You want a refund from the retailer? We're working with them to make sure you can get that, all right? You bought a case that doesn't live up to our standards. We're gonna make sure to do right by you as a customer. Shocker! It's good to see stuff like this. Makes me more interested in the Fractal Torrent. If they open up sales again, I, I, I might be eyeing it. But while we're talking about companies doing refunds, recalls, all that kind of stuff, uh, let's talk about the Gigabyte Newegg saga, in case you haven't been following along. Gamers Nexus, as well as several other outlets to do deep dive analysis of PSUs, kind of showed that Gigabyte's P-Series power supplies explode. Not very good. Some of them, not, not all of the P-Series, but a, a large portion of them, especially ones that have been bundled by Newegg with GPUs on their Newegg shuffle to try to get them out the door because, you know, they're, they're just, you know, fire hazards. So who actually in the right mind would want to buy them besides the fact that they're actually trying to buy a GPU. So Gigabyte, instead of showing any sort of accountability and agreeing to this, they've just kind of kicked the can down the road. And now Newegg is picking that can up, cutting it out a little bit, and then throwing the rest of the half of the can down the road, saying this half's mine, all right? We're gonna recall, we're gonna allow refunds and replacements for a few of these. Not all of these, but there's a few SKUs that we're gonna allow to be refunded or replaced in case you're interested in, you know, replacing this Gigabyte G power supply with another Gigabyte power supply. So if your serial number falls within the 
those Newegg's, I guess, trying to do half right, especially since Gigabyte won't do it. And Sony did something to their PS5. They made it 300 grams smaller. We've been talking about this for a few weeks. Last week, the only thing that we knew was that the stand was different and that the screws were different. But now YouTuber Austin Evans has gotten his hands on one directly from Japan. And we now know why it's roughly a pound lighter. And that's because they have completely changed the heatsink design that's on the SOC. You can see here it's missing a ton of aluminum and a ton of copper. It led to things such as higher exhaust temperatures as well as lower fan noise, not necessarily any different in power draw nor any difference in performance. Austin Evans saying that this is probably a worse console, at least for thermals and cooling. However, I just want to roll the conversation out there that if it's running quieter, that means the fan's probably not working as hard. And if it's exhausting at a higher thing, that can mean that the actual heat sink is more efficient and exhausting the heat more effectively. Just because the heat sink isn't as big doesn't necessarily mean that it's not okay. And the difference of four to five degrees Celsius can be the difference between actually running fine and overheating and then thermal throttling because of that. However, we have to wonder if Sony knows that this is going to be okay. It's running fully in spec. They tested this, but it does seem to indicate that Sony is trying to cut costs in order to make their PS5 profitable, which they've indicated is the case currently. And while we're confused about what's going on with Gigabyte Power Supplies, we're confused on what's going on with Sony's PS5, let's get even more confused about Windows 11, okay? You want support for Windows 11? Well, Asus is gonna give it to you with a BIOS update for KB Lake and Skylake, even though they're not officially supported by Windows 11, which Microsoft says is fine, okay? If you wanna use a Windows 11 ISO install, you can totally do this on an unsupported CPU. That's all right. We actually have a video coming out on UFD Tech tomorrow where I did just that I installed a Windows 11 ISO on an unsupported CPU and then I gamed on it. Get subscribed to UFD Tech to see how that goes. But what they failed to mention in all of their like press release of like, hey, we'll, we'll allow you to do this, is that um, if you actually end up doing that, we're gonna withhold security updates from you because uh, we just, we don't wanna do that. So they're, they're releasing that as a secondary press release after they told everybody, hey, it's fine for you to install Windows 11. Now they're saying, hey, if you do that, listen, you, you should get malware. We don't like you. It's hard to understand why they're phasing out a lot of these CPUs. It does seem like Microsoft's focus on this next generation of Windows is security, which is why they're requiring that TPM 2.0 module in order to actually run the operating system. But at the same time, if you can have that and you can also have a CPU, why is it technically not supported even if it will functionally run? Why are you not providing security updates for this? Is it because you need to focus heavily on like the, the, the very few CPUs you wanna support? They don't wanna have legal issues down the road. I'm not deep enough into the operating system fundamentals to understand why. If you have thoughts, leave them down in the comments. Now, let's go ahead and talk about AMD and their Threadripper 5000 series. There's new benchmarks coming out for that. It shows that it beats the previous generation by roughly 20 to 40% when it comes to like single threaded and multi threaded applications. With the Threadripper Pro 5995WX completing the rock model test in 156.6 seconds, which is 24% less time than the 3995WX Threadripper Pro. So AMD beating AMD. You can't really compare them to Intel since Intel doesn't have any high end desktop chips. And Genesis Mining hasn't had a whole lot of GPUs for a very long time, but now the Chinese Supreme Court has sided with Genesis Mining for them to get GPUs back that have been withheld due to a lawsuit between Genesis Mining and its hosting provider back in 2019. So roughly 485,000 cards have been held by that hosting provider, as well as 60,580 Antminer mining rigs. But this is coming in conjunction with China cracking down on crypto mining operations. Genesis Mining not necessarily saying exactly what's going on with those 485,000 RX 478 gigabyte GPUs, but the speculation is that they might be flooded onto the open market. Will this potentially drive the prices of some of the older Polaris cards down? Hopefully, that's what you will wanna see. Even if it's in the Chinese market, it doesn't affect the Western market. This is good, potentially, for the consumer because they can get used mining cards. And as we all know, if a card's been mined on, it's fine by me. That was really bad. What a way to end this episode of Hot News. Why don't you go check out Saturday's episode where we did This Week in News, where I covered everything that you probably missed from last week in case you missed any episodes. With that being said, I'll see you tomorrow for breakfast, my friends. Chip, chip, cheerios.